Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV. And more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very exciting day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is New Car Day. Now, I've not said that on the channel for a little while now. I know I went through a spree of almost saying that on a weekly basis, but I haven't actually said that for a while now. I think the last thing I collected on the channel was my Testarossa, and it's been a little hiatus since then. I've been a very busy bee, there's been some comings and goings on the channel. There's been some cars that have uh, gone up for sale. There's been one that have sold, the Querity, which I think has annoyed quite a lot of you, which we'll go into in due course. But today, it is time to add something to the garage. Now, you may well be questioning, where on earth am I right now with this lovely Vista behind me? Today, I am at the Paddle Up Rooms. This is Paddle Up HQ, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not gonna be able to show you everything that is going on here. I can show you a little of what has gone on here. This is their HQ. That building over there and this building here with a kind of lounge set up up there. So there's meetings and stuff going on up there at the moment. However, my car is inside behind the glass here. So we are going to go in. We're going to look around. We're gonna see some of what is going on here and the rest will be revealed very soon. And I'll also be attending a track day at Donington on the 4th of November with the car I'm about to pick up with Paddle Up as well. So that will be coming very soon. So more details on the track day at Donington on the 4th, available on Paddle Up's website and on their Instagram. So I just wanna show you something before we get going. I'm coming in here, trying not to show you too much of what's going on, because my new car is just there. So before we get going then, I just wanna show you these three machines. These three machines are on the Paddle Up website. I'm not sure when this video is going out, so I'm not sure whether any of these will be live by the time the video goes out, they might have gone, they might have sold, uh, they might not even have gone up yet. However, let's start with the most obvious one first. This 599 Aperta is absolutely insane. And I'm sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I've let you down because I'm not here to collect this. Now, this isn't just the lighting, that is an orange interior. And more aggressively than that, actually, is the gold fleck in the paint. I don't know if my camera's picking that up, but there's actual gold in the Nero paint there. It is an absolutely sensational spec and an incredibly rare car to boot. You just don't see these around, but that car is just beautiful. So that is available at Paddle Up. I, as I say, I don't know whether the auction for that is live at the moment or what the situation will be by the time the video is out. But that's absolutely mental. And I'm so sorry to say that's not what I'm collecting today. So I can only apologize for that, but I would love one of those in the garage. I just can't stop staring at it. We've also got a Gen 1, the OG Aventador here. Black with red. Doesn't get more iconic than that. And the noise these things make is absolutely insane. And we've also got a black 488, a very black theme in here actually, ladies and gents. Very cool car, right hand drive, I think crema interior, very classic spec with yellow calipers again. More details will be on Paddle Up. So, we've also got in here, I've just tried to keep out of shot my car, which is there, doesn't have a cover on it. We have got an LFA here as well, a Lexus LFA. The car that a lot of you told me I should have bought instead of my Carrera GT. I don't regret that decision. Interestingly enough, when I got the Carrera GT, there was an LFA in contention at the same time. So there was actually a toss up in my head whether or not to get one of these or my Carrera GT. I don't regret my decision, but every time I see one of these, there is a little bit of kind of niggling doubt in my head that I probably should have explored this option a little bit more thoroughly. They are unbelievable. And there's really cool history and kind of unique uh, bits and bobs and te technical data behind these cars that if you know about LFAs, I'm not gonna go into that. We've also got here, not any old Ferrari F40, but this is actually the car that I drove on my channel not too long ago. I uh, drove this actual car on my channel. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go and check it out. It's the first time I've even sat in an F40 let alone driven one with this car. So, and I was able to get my foot down a little bit in this car as well. So uh, a dream come true, a probably once in a lifetime experience really. I mean, there's not many F40s knocking around that you can just jump in. Um, so huge shout out to the guys. However, you are not here to see the F40. You're not here to see the LFA. You're not here to see the 599 Aperta. You are here to see my new car. So without further waffle then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel and to my garage, my new car. It's 
she is then, my 997.2 GT3 RS. So then let's have a little stroll around the spec then. Being a GT3 RS.2, this particular variant has 450 brake horsepower. This particular car is a 2010 model. And in actual fact, this car, bar having an FIA homologated fire extinguisher and harnesses, was essentially just a racing car. Porsche needed to bring this out to do the racing series that they wanted to do. I can't remember the name of it all. I don't actually know the finer technical details, but this effectively was brought out to be a homologated version of their race car. So it is literally a racing car for the road that has airbags and number plates on it. From standard then, you've got dynamic engine mounts and a PASM. You've actually got wider arches at the back and the front over and above the GT3 model, which is just the same as this. Features some of the same front aero, uh, but just is slightly less aggressive. And it's also got a single mass flywheel mated to the 3.8 litre engine in the back there. And you can see 3.8 through the roll cage there. Inside the car, it is a very basic affair. All of them were a manual. You could not option this car with a PDK gearbox, and they're all a manual six speed, as you can see on the slightly grubby gear knob there. There were a few creature comforts optionally available on this car. You could get the Porsche uh, PCM, which is the unit we've got in there. I've actually fiddled with this already. It originally came with, I'll show you actually in the front of the car. I've already fiddled with this car because I've had it for about two months now. I've been abroad for a lot of the time, um, but this car, whilst I was away, I've actually had it fiddled with by the guys at Sexton. So it actually came with this CDR unit, uh, which is actually a pretty basic affair. It's pretty crap, uh, and it's actually going up for sale if anyone wants it, or I've threatened a bin. I don't suspect anyone will want it after I've just given it that sales pitch, um, but that's what came in the car um, as standard, and the original owner of this car did not spec the PCM unit. Now that has been done though, PCM unit, I've been able to, I'm not going to turn a separate video out of this, because I did on my SLS, I'm not sure how well it went down, I've had it tweaked by the guys at Sexton's, so actually when you hold down the info button, you see here, this is what the standard unit does, you hold down the info button, and voila, and then you've got CarPlay on there as well, so when you plug your phone in and actually, um, connect it wirelessly, you get in the car without even plugged in and you've got CarPlay within the standard Porsche PCM 3.0 unit, which is very, very good. A really cool OEM upgrade. It's a very kind of basic affair in here. The steering wheel doesn't have any buttons on it. It's literally just for hooning. This car is built solely for hooning. You've got the door pulls here, which you come to expect now in GT products. And hopping out again, you've got carbon sills and you've got carbon center tunnel there as well. You've got these marvelous folding bucket seats, which are absolutely lovely and actually quite useful. I know there's obviously a cage in the back there. But there's still quite a lot of room for kind of detritus and whatnot in there. So these are actually really useful and very comfortable as well with a red center inserts to match the seat belts and also to match rather regrettably my steel brakes. So I am looking at upgrades to the brakes. I know there's um, various companies you can do that will replace the discs and the pads and make them effectively ceramics. Uh, so we're looking at that. But overall here, it's a very sparse affair and it's literally just for hooning. It is so good. The car has now covered 7,393 miles. When I collected it, it was at about six and a half thousand miles. Production numbers on this car then is estimated to be around 1500. So there's only slightly more of these than there are Carrera GTs. And I suspect probably a lot less than 1500 less because they were not worth a huge amount. At one point, I suspect a lot of these got written off prematurely. These days, the values on them are well over 200,000 pounds for a low mileage example. And they really are hen's teeth to find one that has not had some sort of incident. I just love all the kind of racing inspired little bits and bobs on this. And it's actually a really rare color combination because we've actually got champagne on the end plates there, champagne on the wheels, and kind of champagne decals as well on there, and then round this side as well. We've got the iconic GT3 RS. I'm kind of sad 
they've stopped doing that now, but also it's just cool. It just really, really suits the car and I'm not going to get rid of any of those decals. You could have optioned it from new white with red wheels, with blue wheels. Um, you can also get the gray color with red and with blue. And you can also get the gray color with the champagne on it, which is actually the famous Porsche GB press car, Hebe, as a lot of people refer to that car as. It's a very famous car. All the team there absolutely love it. Uh, and it's widely regarded the GT3 RS 997.2 as one of the greatest drivers cars of all time. Now, some of you will be shouting and saying, but Tom, why didn't you get a four litre? Why didn't you get a four litre? Everyone's got one of those. Um, there is a very specific reason I got this and not a four litre. The four litre is an inordinately expensive car. It is not a car that I would be comfortable just hooning around in and putting loads and loads and loads of miles on. A good four litre, a UK car, right hand drive, is 400 grand plus. This, was nothing like that, absolutely nothing like that. And we will go into how much this car costs, I think another time, because there's a bit of a story with this car. There is a bit of a story. No, I'm not just swapping the number plates on it and pretending it's mine. I have paid for it, but there's a bit more of a story to it, which we'll go into at some point in depth. Okay, so bear with on that. It's only got 7,000 miles on the clock and it's a car that I can use. And actually it's softened the pain of me getting rid of my Carrera T. I absolutely love it. And even down to the front here, this front splitter, if you scrape this, it's nothing to replace. I think it's about 130 quid, something like that. Which again, it's not nothing, but it's not the end of the world. And you've got the champagne on the front there. This front plinth is going to go. I don't like it. I just think it's horrible. And this is a temporary measure putting this plate on here. You can see the flies on the front. Uh, I've clearly been having quite a good time in this car. Um, so that, the front plate plinth is going to go and I'm gonna get a road legal uh, sticker plate to go over the top, potentially even off the plinth holes as well. I'll be getting SunTech PPF on it as well after getting it fully detailed. And then it is going to go on track at Donington with the guys here at Paddle Up. I think then that is that. Thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe, thumbs up, and of course, do let me know in the comments what you think of the new addition to my garage. I'm aiming at some point very soon to get this together with the Carrera GT and go out for a proper drive. And potentially even, if he's really unlucky, Mr. JWW out on his four litre and also Mr. 888MF in his four litre as well. So there's going to be some 997.2 parties coming to YouTube very soon. Do subscribe, thumbs up, blah, 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 and I'll see you all very soon. Bye, guys.